Uncovering the root of the faith that works. The word of faith is the core message of this mandate. God said to me, the hour has come to liberate the world from all oppressions of the devil through the preaching of the word of faith and I'm sending you to undertake this task. So this is a faith house. This is a faith center. Every member of this family has an inheritance of faith in this place. And in the name of Jesus, I decree that everyone's faith comes alive. Amen. So as to keep working in victory and triumph. Amen. You never suffer any further defeat in your life. Amen. For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. First John 5.4 this is the victory that overcomes the world in spite of the devil, even our faith. So what we've been doing in our series for Sunday services is unraveling the roots of the faith that works. And my prayer is that everyone will catch it this time. And begin to enjoy the fruit thereof in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. First, we must recognize that the faith that works anchors on the world. Faith that works anchors on the world. Romans 10 17, faith comes by hearing and hearing. And hearing to the point of understanding the word of God. Simply put, faith comes by hearing and understanding the word of God. Not just hearing. A man that wanders away from the path of understanding, he shall abide in the congregation of the dead. Proverbs 21 verse 16. It's not just hearing, but understanding what to hear. We saw the story of a man by name, the Ethiopian eunuch. He was reading from Isaiah 53. And Philip, by the Holy Ghost, went to join him in his chariot and asked him, do you understand what you are reading? How can I accept what should guide me? And Philip began from the same scripture. His eyes were opened. Here is what I can't be. Can't be but I said, if you believe, you can't be. He said, I believe you can understand any truth and doubt it. Our doubt is a function of our lack of understanding of such truth. There is nobody who wants to be a failure. So if the world tells you this is what it takes to be a success, and you say you don't agree, it means you don't understand it. Because if they ask you genuinely, do you want to be a success? You say, yeah. Now, the world says this is what to do to be successful. You say, no. It means you don't understand it. If you do, you won't say no. If you do, you won't say no. Spiritual understanding is key to operating in faith. In Colossians chapter 1 and verse 9, Paul was praying and he said, for this cause we also, since the day we heard of it, do not cease to pray for you that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. In all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Spiritual understanding is vital to operating in the faith that works.
vital. Now, what is faith? Let's try to do two or three of those definitions and then we move on. Number one, faith is being persuaded of the truth. The prevailing circumstances notwithstanding, until the truth triumphs. Faith is being fully persuaded of the truth. The prevailing circumstances notwithstanding, until faith triumphs. Romans 4, 17 to 21. Romans chapter 4. As it's written, I've made thee a father of many nations before him whom he believed, even God who quickened the dead and called those in that be not as though they were. Who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. Now, and be not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead when he was about a hundred years old neither yet the deadness of Sarah's wounds those are prevailing circumstances he is taken to the promise of God through unbelief but was strong in faith giving glory to God 21 now being fully persuaded that what God has promised he was able to perform being fully persuaded. So faith is being fully persuaded of the truth, the prevailing circumstances notwithstanding, until the truth triumphs. Standing strong. The prevailing circumstances notwithstanding, because faith never returns defeated from battle. This is the victory that overcomes the world. Take the shield of faith and you quench all the fear that does of the devil. You drop the shield of faith, you are defeated in any battle, no matter how weak the battle may be. What is faith? Number two, faith is a display of confidence in God until when the desired result is obtained. A display of confidence in God until when the desired result is obtained. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 35. Cast not away therefore your confidence which has a great recompense of reward. For you have need of patience that after you have done the will of God, you may obtain the promise. A manifestation of confidence in God. Sustain us of confidence in God until when the desired result is obtained. That's faith. And number three, faith is the answer to all in possible questions of life. Faith is the answer to all impossible challenges of life. If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believe. Let's now examine the kinds of faith that works. Number one, Prayer and fasting boosted faith. Prayer and fasting boosted faith. Isaiah chapter 58 and verse 6. It's not the first that I have chosen. This is why I prescribe fasting. Among other things, to break and destroy every yoke. Then shall thy light break forth as the morning, verse 8. So fasting 
It's a spiritual platform for outbreak of revelation, which is what steers faith. Revelation is all about spiritual understanding of the truth. It's about being able to see what God is saying. And fasting is prescribed for outbreak of revelation. So when we get into a fast, among the blessings thereof is outbreak of light from the world. And no one sees a thing and still doubts it, even if you are Thomas. No one ever doubts what he sees. So fasting creates a platform that blasts the blindfold of the devil and gives us access to the light of the world, which tears our faith to deliver. A vital outcome of prayer and fasting. I'd read quite a few books on prosperity, but I knew that I've not found it. So I put up a three-day fast and gathered um, my mentor's materials, uh, Dr. Copeland and his wife, and my Bible. Lord, show me the secret of kingdom prosperity. On the third day, light broke out. Heaven's light broke through. And God spoke to me from Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18. My son David, my prosperity plan is not a promise. It has no respect for prayers. My prosperity plan is a covenant until your part is played i am not committed my god faith came alive in me here is it i found it a prayer and fasting platform provided that access outbreak of light it came on the third day and is still speaking today that was march 22nd 1982 You don't wait for your faith to build itself. It's like a man waiting for his muscles to build itself. Engage in relevant spiritual exercises to build your faith. For instance, your understanding is limited until you are committed to learning. Even Daniel, a most endowed man, he said in Daniel chapter 9 verse 2, I, Daniel, understood by books. I understood by books. I understood by books. Daniel 9 2. We were in the frost with some of my team members, September 6, 1983. That's sometimes back, 40 years ago. And the Lord opened me up by an explosive insight to Psalm 34, verse 5. They looked unto him and they were lightened. And their face were no more ashamed. He said, my son, you have two eyes. I said, yes, sir. Can you make one to look up and one to look down? I tried it. Anytime you are looking unto man, never claim to be looking unto me. But if you fix your eyes on me, you'll never be ashamed. My God. That shut my eyes to every man as my source for life, including my person. You don't want to be ashamed? Fix your eyes on me. I'm up to anything that we ever demand in life. Keep your eyes on me. For one to him that trusts a man will make it the arm of flesh his strength. It shall be like a heat in the desert. <laughs> he shall not see when good is coming. But blessed is the man whose trust is in the Lord. My God, light broke out from that simple innocent scripture.
prayer and fasting and searching is an asset in the school of faith. Prayer, fasting, and searching is an asset in the school of faith. I had some wonderful experience October 1 to 4, 1981. I, I called it a mountain of transfiguration experience. Amazing things came. Among the wonders of that time is, I'm going to bless as I promise you, but thou shalt not borrow. My God, I made a vow against borrowing. 81, this is 2023, 42 years ago, God has been faithful. Can I hear your loudness, amen? amen? There are things you have not seen, others you have not seen clearly at all. You can engage the plan of prayer and fasting for outbreak of light. So that by that revelation, your faith can be stirred up. Can I hear your loudness, amen? Number two, the kind of faith that was. God confident boosted faith. God confident boosted faith. Joshua and Caleb steal the people. Stop it. We are well able to take the land and possess it. God. was the strength of their stand. They were God-confident individuals. All the other ten went the other side, but Joshua and Caleb lived on. God-confident faith makes an ever-triumphant believer. You know what the three Hebrew boys said? Our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us, and he will deliver us. God-confident faith makes an ever-triumphant believer. Praise God. God confident faith makes an ever triumphant believer. Philippians chapter 3, verse 3, Paul the Apostle said, We are the circumcision that worship God in spirit. We rejoice in Christ Jesus. We have no confidence in the flesh. Absolute confidence in God is what makes more than the conqueror in the kingdom. Absolute confidence in God. And you heard Paul saying in Philippians 4, 13, I can do all things through Christ, through Christ who strengthens me. During the course of building this sanctuary, in July I was in Kano. We are going to dedicate this place in September. The roof was still not completed. Two months. And the Lord showed me that morning from Genesis chapter 1 that he created the entire world and the fullness thereof in six days. He will not need two months to finish an ordinary building. I screamed, two months, too much. I came down home after that meeting and I made able to start screaming, two months, too much. Two months, too much. For God who created the world in six days, two months, too much to finish an ordinary building, two months, too much. He did it. We serve a God of strange works and strange arts. Isaiah 28 and verse 21 to 22. For the Lord shall rise up again as a man present, and he shall be wrought as in the month of Gibeon, that he may do his work, his strange works, and perform his acts, his strange acts. Bring to pass as he says, Now therefore, neither be ye mockers. God is up to anything, he says. Don't be found mocking God with your own belief. It's a risk. God is up to anything, he says. I was there in July. 1999, and rain fell. We were in an all-night meeting. I never left that rain. The rain was pouring on me. The center was not done. All the areas were done. Anybody could be mocking, if you like to. 
But I knew the beauty was completed, even though I was drenched in rain. Praise God. Awesome God. No one like him. Neither be ye mockers. Let your bands be made strong. For I heard from the Lord of hosts. A great consumption determined against all the earth. Don't be found mocking the ability of God. It's the omnipotent God. It's up to anything he says. Can I hear you, amen? amen? He specializes in doing strange works and bringing to pass strange acts. Luke chapter 5, verse 26. We have seen strange things today. That's what he does. So we must come to engage our confidence in the God that can accomplish any feat within one week. As he did our creation. And the next Sabbath, almost the whole city came together to hear the word of God. Next Sunday shall be awesome. Amen. The hand of God will do the unusual. Amen. We are going to see the strange works of God. Amen. And experience the strange acts of God. Amen. Acts 13 and verse 44. You must engage your confidence in God that can make anything happen in one day. Mm. Self same day, he brought out three million people out of Egypt. Awesome God. One day, like we read in that epistle, he multiplied the church in the upper room 25 times. It's up to anything he says. We must go to build our confidence in God that can accomplish any agenda overnight. He said, this time tomorrow, there shall be surplus of food. And the man said, what? You think we are dummies here? We are not religious bikers. Go and say that in church. Don't say that in the palace. Tomorrow, how? He was just bragging. The prophet said, you will see, but your mouth will not taste of it. Second Kings chapter 7, 1 and 2. And verse 20, verse 20 was trampled under foot. When food came supernaturally and trampled unto death, he never tasted of it. He saw the abundance, but never had it. The way of mocking the prophetic. This God can deliver any task in one hour. Come and say one hour. Revelation 18, verse 10. In one hour, Babylon came down. Turning afar off for the fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, thou great city Babylon, thou mighty city, for in one hour is thy judgment come. One hour. They go to one hour intervention. They can make anything happen in one, one, one hour. Verse 16 of it, the same revelation on verse 16. And saying, Alas, alas, thou great city. That was clothed in fine linen and purple and scarlet and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls. Verse 17. For in one hour, so great riches is come to naught. One hour. He can silence any enemy. He can silence any wicked force standing on the path in one hour. There are several one hour between now and next Sunday. And so the enemy will suffer torment. Our God is God of all possibilities. We must engage our confidence in this God to see any prophetic agenda delivered. We are safe for the best. Number three kind of faith that works is kingdom advancement driven faith. Kingdom passionate driven faith. That was Elijah's kind of faith. I've been very jealous for God. They have torn down thy altars. They have slain their prophets. Kingdom passionate faith will always deliver.
You can't be in love with God and the interest of his kingdom. And not enjoy his backing. That makes a believer a failure-proof entity. You always have his back. First Kings chapter 19, verse 10 and 14. And so Elijah prayed in First Kings 18, 23 to 39, and the fire of the Lord fell. Why? It was kingdom passionate for the land of Israel. A man of like passion, he prayed earnestly. He will always answer the prayer of such individuals. We have examples of men like Nehemiah, like Gideon, like David, like Paul. They were all kingdom advancement, passionate individuals. And we saw how much their faith delivered. Number four, seed time and harvest driven faith. Seed time and harvest driven faith. We're examining the kind of faith that works. Seed time and harvest driven faith. Now, just before I leave the kingdom advancement driven faith, please let me just spice it with a few of these testimonies. One of our pastors recently was attacked almost at the point of death. And the wife kept saying, Lord, let his service speak for him. Let what? Let his service speak for him. He was in the region of death, but let his service speak for him. Let his service. That is kingdom advancement driven faith. This my husband serves you. Every Saturday we are told he will be out in the morning for Jesus witnessing. And now came under this attack of death. Let his service speak for him and God heard. We saw him and the wife on this altar. I still saw him last Sunday in the service. One of our pastors. Let his service speak for him. You shall serve the Lord your God. He shall bless your bread and your water. He will take away sickness from the midst of you. You shall not be barren or cast or young. Let his service speak for him. Somebody here was sick. And he said, Jesus, I have the following reasons for you why I cannot be sick. You said the laborers are few. I'm one of your laborers. Amen. A service spoke for her and she was made whole. Let a service speak for him. Kingdom of women driven faith we always deliver. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Seed time and harvest driven faith, number four. Why the art remains? Seed time and harvest shall not cease. You are not permitted to reap what you don't sow. If you don't sow evil, you can't reap evil. You can't sow good and reap evil. If you sow good, it is good you will reap. Amen. If you invest in kind of things, you reap corruption. But if you invest in spiritual things, you reap life everlasting. Galatians 6, 7 to 9. Be not mocked. I mean, God is not mocked. Whatever a man sows, that shall he reap. You sow to the spirit. You sow to the flesh. You reap, you reap death. You sow to the spirit. Life everlasting. Therefore, don't be willy in where doing. You shall repeat in due season if you fail not. So spiritual investment will always return with a harvest of life. Not things, life, life, life. Heaven order of life. Heaven on earth kind of lifestyle. Interesting. You know, whatever good thing any man does, the same we shall receive from the Lord. Seed time and harvest different faith.
except you can break my covenant of the day and of the night, that I should not be there at night in their season. Then may also my covenant when I serve, they, they will be broken. Jeremiah 33, verse 20 and 21. Be careful what kind of seed you sow. God that determines what kind of harvest is awaiting you. Seed time and harvest driven faith. Now, God's word is seed. He said, now the parable is seed. The seed is the word of God. So the more of the seed of the word you engage with, and the words are supposed to do their spirit and their life, the more life you reap in return. Keep increasing your word seed. It will enhance the quality of your life. Keep investing in kingdom advancement and divorce. It's a seed. And you live honor and return. Number five of the kind of faith that works is authority conscious faith. Authority conscious faith. Authority conscious faith. Authority cannot be achieved, it is only conferred. They ask Jesus, who gave you this authority? You can't give yourself authority. In Luke chapter 9 verse 1, Jesus called his two disciples and gave them power and authority over all devils and to cure diseases. Authority conscious faith. The kind of faith that works. They came in search of Elijah to arrest him. If I be a man of God, I know God called me, let fire come down from heaven and consume you. And 50 soldiers and their captain were consumed into ashes. The second came, they were consumed. The third came, he said, I beg you, sir. I would never have come to think of arresting you, but I was sent. Please have mercy on me. I beg you. Authority, conscious faith. Peter says, such as I have, I give unto you. Authority. Freely ye are given, Jesus told them, and freely give. Matthew chapter 10 and verse 8. And Peter could say, him, ask chapter 3 verse 6, such as I have. Authority, conscious faith. I give unto you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. And he lived and walked, leaping and praising God. Authority, conscious faith, is the kind of faith that works. In Acts chapter 9, verse 32, there was this man that was importing his feet from his bath, and um, Peter perceived that he had faith to be healed. And he said, Aeneas, Jesus Christ, make it the old. And he arose immediately. Authority, conscious faith. No one will mess up with you anymore. Amen. Jesus said, I'm giving you my name. Go with my authority. Deal with every devil. Conquer every obstacle. Number six, sacrifice prompted faith. Psalm 50 verse 5, gather my sins together unto me, those who have made sacrifice, covenant with me by sacrifice, and the heavens will declare his righteousness, for God is judge himself. He sits at the altar of sacrifice. To declare his righteousness, you got it right. The altar of sacrifice is a turn around altar. When the Lord turned again, the captain of Zion were like them that dream. He that went forth with tears, bearing precious seed, sacrifice, 
shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing the sheaves with him. The altar of sacrifice is the altar of turnaround. Sacrifice prompted faith. That is the Holy Ghost prompting you to rear an altar of sacrifice. It's one kind of faith that delivers supernaturally. Prompted you. I was prompted to rear an altar of sacrifice at a time. And the Lord said to me the same day, my son David, even if you don't want to be rich, it's too late. It's a turnaround altar. The altar of sacrifice is a turnaround altar. When prompted by the Holy Ghost and you respond accordingly, I mean, it delivers supernaturally. Finally, number seven, enough is enough faith. The kind of faith that works. Violent faith is required to stop the mouth of lions and quench the furnace of fire. Remember, when the days of John the Baptist till now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence and the violent take it by force. And by, that is the force of faith. The violent takes it by the force of faith. By the force, not energy of the flesh. The force of faith. The force of faith. The Bible says through faith, they stop the mouth of lions. They quench the fiery furnace. They wax valiant in fight. You know, faith strengthens. It says, Sarah receives strength to conceive seed. Praise God. Violent faith is required to stop the enemy from molesting our lives. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Please know that God is committed to our settlement. First Peter 5 and verse 10. And the God of all grace, who has called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you have suffered a while, after you have suffered a while, make you perfect, strengthen, establish, and said to you, God is eager to say to you and me, Amen. today is declared your day of settlement in all unsettled areas of your life. In all unsettled areas of your life, today is declared your day of settlement. But it requires the enough is enough faith to secure a verdict of enough is enough from God. Every day is God's day or the day we are set to take delivery of our inheritance is our day. Second Corinthians chapter 6 verse 2. I've heard in the time appointed in the day of salvation of Socorro, behold, now is the accepted time. When? When? Behold, now is the day of salvation. When? When? You are walking free from this service. You are walking free from this service. From every captivity of hell, you are walking free. From every generation of course, we are walking free. Amen. From every spell of the wicked, you are walking free. Amen. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 27 to 28. The Bible says, Withhold not good from them to whom it is due when it is in the power of thy hand to do so. Say not unto thy neighbor, go and come again, and tomorrow I will give, when thou hast it by you. Good question. Does God have the answer to that question of your life? Now, we need to ask you to come back tomorrow for it. You are getting it today. Just target that issue as an embarrassment to your life. 
Enough is enough. Today, not today. Enough is enough. My God is up to it any day. He's ready any moment. Now I'm ready for him. It must happen today. Can I hear your loudest amen? Yeah. The paralytic man was set with his faith. He had to go through the roof and God established the verdict of enough is enough on his behalf. You remember the story? Mark chapter 2 verse 5 to 12. Jesus saw their faith as they were bringing him down through the roof. He said, son, take your bed and go. That man said, today, not today. No access to the door. There must be access to the roof. I must get there. And he returned home a free man. You are returning home today a free man. Yeah. Bartimaeus' faith was on the line, crying his heart out. Jesus! They said, shut up, shut sure, what? Jesus! What he said, today, not today, I won't let you pass me by. He received his sight back. Whatever is missing in your life, you are getting it back. Mark 10, 46 to 52. Then the woman of Canaan came with great faith. Have mercy on oh, my son. He said, no, I'm not sent to the Gentiles. He said, it's not proper to cast the food of the children and give it to dogs. He said, but can dogs also not eat of the crumbs that fall from the table? Great is thy faith. And his son was made whole the same moment. You can make today your day. God is eager to set to you. So bring up your violent enough is enough faith and God will respond to it. Amen. Can I hear your loudest amen? amen? Remember, our God is ever willing. That leper or leprous man said, if thou will, thou canst make me old. He said, I will be thou clean. And immediately, Leprosy left him. Matthew 8, 1 to 3. Ever willing. Is ever able. With men, this is impossible. Not with God, for with God, all things are possible. Mark 10, 27. Our God is ever ready. Now is the accepted time. Now is the day of salvation. Ever ready. God wants all our concerns turned to testimonies. What, whatever anyone is set for today, God is set to turn them into testimonies. Amen. It's your hour of settlement. Amen. It's your moment of settlement. Amen. You must return with testimonies. Amen. You must return with testimony. Amen. Give the Lord the biggest hand of praise, everybody. Amen. Thank you, Jesus.